Hello again, YouTube, and especially all of you photographers out there. Today, I'm going to take you through a quick build on how you can create your own wide-angle filter adapter for a fraction of the cost of retail. Okay, I want to preface this uh, tutorial by saying that this specific build is going to be for the Panasonic Lumix 7-14mm ultra-wide lens for the Micro Four Thirds system. Um, this is one of the lenses that is particularly problematic. I've been searching for a wide-angle uh, adapter for this for a while, and I decided just to build my own, and it was actually a lot easier and less expensive and incredibly stable than or more stable than some of the variations that I've seen online. Um, the problem with ultra wide lenses that have this bulbous kind of front element here is kind of a con convex uh, kind of uh, rounded dome front is that they don't take uh, filters. And that's problematic for a couple reasons. Some photographers really like to have filters to put on the front of their lenses to keep them protected from dust and debris and scratches and things like that. Um, while a lot of, uh, Photographers that shoot landscapes particularly like to use things like circular polarizers or um, the graduated neutral density filters, which are kind of like a large uh, faded plate that you can slide up and down in these front holders. And because these bulbous front elements don't take threads, you can't secure traditional lenses to the front. And in the past, you've either had to do some sort of makeshift thing at home. I've seen some videos online using some cardboard and some duct tape. Um, I've seen other ones that have uh, purchased adapters at a, a relatively high cost to accommodate these ultra wide lenses. And there's nothing wrong with either of those. My philosophy has always been if the shoe fits, wear it. If all you have available is cardboard and duct tape and it gets the job done, by all means go that route. If you have the funds available and you wanna go to something that's factory machine to fit your lens, go that route as well. The problem is some of these models um, are out of stock online. You can't find them. Some of them are available uh, directly from a supplier. They're no longer, I guess, made because they've been out of stock for months, if not longer. Uh, their affiliate links through Amazon are not available. And then some of these other uh, recommended uh, adapters from other creators look really great. However, just to get the um, modification that will allow you to take the wide angle filter holder like this, you're looking at about $80, $85 US. Some of these are um, created, I think, in England, maybe something like that. And then you have to get the usually the Nissi or some other version of a wide angle um, uh, plate holder or a flat filter holder for the front, which runs you another $80 $200 plus. So as opposed to spending between $150 and $250 just on the holder before you get your lenses or before you get your uh, filters, I thought I'd take you through this build. So that's a preface on why I came up with this. And now we're going to get into how it works. All right, guys, going to get into the uh, different components you're going to need to fulfill this build now. And I do want to say that everything that I purchased online, the main components for this build and the second version, which I'll show you uh, later in the video, um, can be found in the description below. Those are affiliate links. They are the exact same items I used in this build. And if you purchase through those links, you help out this channel. So the first thing you're going to need is a JJC LN series metal lens hood. And I've used these on lenses in the past. They're very inexpensive from Amazon. They're durable, they're made of metal, and um, they work really well for a lot of things, but they're particularly awesome for this build, and I'll explain why in just a second. So you definitely need this, as this is gonna be the heart of the entire build. The second component you're gonna need is a filter holder. Now, I recommend the Coyote brand. Uh, this is the 100 series filter holder, again, linked for you below. And the reason for this is simple. It's metal in quality. It's very well built. Um, it is not expensive at all. And it will be wide enough to help you with that wide angle field of view. You don't have to worry about having like a Coke and P style filter holder that's too narrow that is really going to get in the field of view at the seven to kind of nine millimeters, which ultimately would kind of defeat the purpose of having such an ultra wide angle lens. So this and this will work together as I will show you here and as I've tested. And we're going to get into now why this is an awesome piece, how it's going to work, and some things to look out for. Now, as good as the JJC is, um, I did have one issue, and you want to just check that out when you first get your order in. I've ordered a ton of stuff from this company before, and I've never really noticed an issue. 
but on um, this particular lens hood, as you can see here, part of the reason that we we're choosing this is the back end is a 77 millimeter diameter, and that doesn't really matter too much, except it's the narrowest opening that will fit over the built-in uh, lens hood that's on the lens. The lens kind of flares out the front. This will go over that with only a little bit of room to spare. You don't want to get anything too big because you'll have too much room, too much wiggle room, and anything too small obviously won't work. The other reason we're going with this is that it's 77 in the back here, which again is kind of irrelevant except for opening size, but on the front, this is a standard 82 millimeter thread inside here. And um, the reason that's going to come into play is it's going to allow us to modify or add this um, filter holder to the front. So if you kind of get ahead of me here in your thinking about how this is going to come together, this is how this works. This fastened to your lens, right, is going to accommodate a standard 82 millimeter adapter. This would just then screw onto the front and then you attach this to that and you're good to go. Now the problem I experienced is with this particular model here. I did a test version. I built one of these very, very quickly um, without trying to be too precise. Um, I had glue everywhere, all kinds of stuff, just to see if the concept would work. It did. I decided to make another one for this video that was a little bit more polished and a little bit more um, focused and, and I took my time to do things a little bit better. Went ahead and did that, film the whole thing, and then realized that the threads on the front of the second filter I got were actually out of alignment or messed up, so it would never grab a hold of the other filter thread, which obviously defeats the whole purpose. You've got this mounted to your camera, and this can just fall off, and that's not something you want to deal with. So this is version one, this is version two, and finally version three. And so I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step, um, of what I did here, but here's a really quick rundown. Basically, you can use any drill that you have. I used a drill press to try to make these a little bit more precise and a little bit straighter um, to drill three holes in the edge, kind of creating a triangle. And then with epoxy resin, um, we're going to secure these number eight, um, I think they're number eight, 32, um, little uh, screws and nuts to the outside. And what this is going to do is allow you to secure it to the edge of uh, the lens around the perimeter of the front element and um, really keep it nicely and secure. And so I'll take you through the build now and then we'll come back and tell you about a few other things that I did to really kind of refine this and, and polish it up. All right, now that the holes are drilled, uh, basically all I'm gonna do is mix up some uh, fairly quick setting epoxy. This is five minute epoxy. Uh, mix it up, let it get a little bit tacky, and then uh, brush it onto the nuts and to the outside of the, the lens hood so that there's some tackiness to it. And then that should secure in place uh, pretty well. And that will allow the threads to pass through uh, cleanly and securely and create some tension on the outside of the built-in lens hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix the epoxy up now, let it sit for a little bit. I'll probably fast forward through that and then we'll apply it. All right, the epoxy has been sitting for just a little bit here, a couple minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint it on around using a brush to keep it thin and precise around each of the openings on, on the inside of these screws. And I've run some uh, torn up, I don't know if this will focus here, some torn up uh, shop towel, rolled it through to try to keep the threads uh, clean from epoxy because if that gets in there, then you're gonna wind up having issues with uh, throwing, threading the screws through later. And so I'm gonna try to set that in place now. And 
keeping the uh, glue out of the interior opening will help keep the glue off of the threads as well. It has a tendency to overflow. Again, I'm going to let this sit up on the surface for a couple of minutes as well. Let it get real good and tacky before joining the two edges. Now this is in place. These aren't going to really slide a whole lot because again, it was tacky on tacky. So they should stay put pretty well. Um, but the rest of this did solidify. And what I like to do is once this gets, once this gets kind of hardened up, I like to run a little bit of extra epoxy around the lip, kind of create, kind of buttressing the edges there a little bit just to keep it secure because there will be a little bit of tension on these and want to make sure that that tension, um, uh, stays put. So I'm going to go ahead and start drying this and I have a little fan out of frame here. I'm going to go ahead and start drying this off and then um, I will uh, come back and we'll start working on putting epoxy around the edges. What I'm doing now is I've just used some of this Bob Smith Industries Uncure, uh, not really designed for epoxy, but it works well. And I've put it on a Q-tip and spun it just in the threaded opening. And what I'm doing now is I'm actually taking one of the screws, now that these have set up a little bit, and then just gently threading it to make sure of two things. One, that it doesn't hang up on any of the threads, that there's no goo or gunk, and that it comes out the inside so that the hole is lined up the way it should be. That way, once these harden, we don't have to worry about holes being offset. Okay, so this isn't completely dry yet. It's probably been about uh, maybe five or 10 minutes. The glue is set up really nicely around it though. I know the threads are clean and I know the uh, nut openings are um, perfectly aligned with the holes that we drilled out on the inside. So I've pre-mixed some more epoxy here and I've let it sit for just a little bit, not nearly as long as last time. And I'm gonna take some more and I'm going to go ahead and coat it just around the outside of each screw, building up little mounds of adhesive so that the bolts, like I said, have a little bit more support when this hardens. This is about four ton epoxy. Um, I use this for all my knife handles and I've never had one crack or break or chip, knock on wood. And I feel real confident about the limited amount of pressure. I mean, four ton epoxy is pretty strong, but the limited amount of, of pressure and tension that's going to be exerted to these screws. I mean, it's just to kind of hold a filter in place is not going to be very significant. So I'm not worried about torquing these out of position, but having this extra epoxy along the edge here is just some really nice insurance. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this around. You can kind of, I don't know if it'll focus there, but I've kind of built it up around the edges of the screw. And I'm going to rotate this in front of a fan just out of frame so that it doesn't run. Um, like I said, this is, this is set up pretty well right now. It's not running anywhere. But I'm going to uh, hold it in front of a fan out of frame for three or four minutes and let this kind of get uh, preliminarily solidified. Again, it is five-minute epoxy. And then I'm going to let this sit overnight for sure to make sure it's good and hard. And then we'll come back and finish up the project. 
Okay, back from the build, and this is what the finished product looks like with the epoxy all dry. Um, you can see right here, it's mounded up, kind of got a little hill going up to the edge that will help make that secure. So as you turn the screws, no tension or torque will, will pull those loose. The last thing I did with this component right here is I got some Plasti Dip, and uh, again, you don't have to do this. This is just like a little extra finishing touch. And if you don't know what this is, basically it's a uh, plastic style resin uh, mix. So as you dip it in, it adheres to whatever you dip it in. And then when it hardens, it gives it a rubberized texture. And so what I did was I took a brush and I painted a little bit of it on each of the ends of the screws, let it dry for about 30 minutes, added a little bit more, and then let it sit overnight. And all that's going to do is kind of rubberize the front of the screws so they're not um, so abrasive. And then what I've done is I've added a little bit of painter's tape to the edge of my lens so that as these um, screw down, there's a little bit more uh, protection to keep the screws from scratching the surface because, again, this could rotate, um, that sort of thing. So that's what I've done, and that's how you complete the main build. Now, you can use this as is. Um, there is another way of creating the same thing that doesn't require any screws, any bolts, or any glue. And then you can merge the two. Whoop. You can merge the two, which is actually what I prefer because it does a couple other things. So I'm going to show you the other uh, component, and then I'm going to um, show you uh, why I prefer the two here in just a second. So... All you're going to need to do this portion of it is uh, some of this polyfoam caulk uh, saver, which is basically just a little bit of foam that you use in house repairs around windows and things like that to kind of keep the elements out when that sort of thing. Um, you can get a bag of this as I think it's 20 feet. Yeah, it's 20 feet. This is the three H inch size, and you can pick this up at Home Depot for like three dollars. And this is way more than you will actually need. And all you're going to do is take your filter that you created here, and you're going to trace the inside with this caulking. So all you're going to do is push this around on the inside, making sure to push it all the way against the edge. You don't want to have it come too far forward because that'll make it too tight. You want to go all the way around the inside. And the easiest way to do this is actually before you, you put the screws in. Um, let me go ahead and cut this now, but you can do it after if you choose. And all you're going to do then is take that one piece out, put it end to end, and then just put some electrical tape, painter's tape, any type of tape you have, and you're basically going to make a foam washer. And then what I do is I create two of them, and I stack them on the inside. And when you stack them together, these are actually taped together. This is what it looks like. And then all you do with this is put it in with one going below the screws and one going above the screws so that the screws can pass through that center gap. All right, like this. And that's going to create two things. This is going to create a tighter seal around the lens. So this is going to help keep it really stable in place. The screws will then hold it down. And it also prevents light from leaking in the back. Should you experience a glare on the back of the filters you're using, this will help prevent that. It'll kind of make it light tight. The only thing about doing it this way is that you will need to remove the lens to mount it. You'll have to pass the back of the lens through the opening like this. Okay, I've gone back to my first uh, generation of it because it was actually taped in and just a little bit easier to secure to wrap this video up. But once it's in place, you just want to tighten your screws down. And I don't know if I mentioned elsewhere in the video, my test model, I used a number six, I think it is. I up to a number eight, uh, number 832, because uh, it had a thicker portion on the front to grab a hold of. Now you can use wing style nuts and things like that. I just think these are lower profile and they still have a little bit of texture and some grip. So you can really tighten these down. And the reason I do both again is light protection from the back, a little bit of extra um, tightness around here. It kind of keeps everything from wiggling. I mean, this is on there pretty good. I wouldn't want to go throwing it or, I mean, I'll hold it by it. So it's on there really, really good. And um, the other reason that um, I do it is there's a little bit of vibration reduction, not that there would be a lot from the front element, but having just these three pins 
and no other protection, it could be prone to vibration. So that's something to consider. So once this is secured in place, you're just gonna take your filter. Um, this part is separate. This is that adapter ring. You're just gonna screw this on. So once you have the ring on the front like this, you just take your adapter and you pull it from the bottom up. It's kind of got little teeth that hooks on there. And then you just wanna secure it with this little latch and then you're good to go. Now the good thing about this is you can move this because it has, it's not secure, it's not rigid, it's not set to any particular place. You can actually unscrew this and slide this forward or backward more depending on how much clearance you need between the um, filter that you're using and the built-in front elements here. I like to put it in and then slide it back to where it's just in front of the um, flower petal kind of, um, top part of the built-in lens hood here. And this filter holder also has a two or three stack. It comes default two stack. I have made it a three stack because I find that to pull this back, um, I can't use the rear one here, um, but I rarely use three filters anyway. Using two is very, very easy. And in my experience, um, I was able to shoot test shots at seven millimeters, um, which is all the way wide. Um, with these not showing in the frame as long as I have it pulled back enough. And so that is the way you would make a traditional plate style uh, filter holder for your ultra wide angle lens. Now, I mentioned that there's another alternative. You can do a combination of these or whichever one suits you. Again, um, we'll go ahead and take this off. You will still need the main uh, adapted filter that you've created. And this other component, again, doesn't need any modification because it will work as is. And this is going to be a Sensi Pro uh, wide angle lens hood. Again, this is a metal lens hood, but this is gonna adapt from 82 to 105 millimeters. And it's gonna allow you to do something that this filter system really can't do or doesn't do very well. And that is allow you to use standard circular filters. So I'm gonna screw this in the front just as I did the other one. This one has a lot more room to play, but again, look through your viewfinder and make sure that this is out of the field of view once your lenses are on there and that's ready to go. And here's the reason this may be something that some of you are interested in. 105 millimeter filters are really big and classically really expensive, but this version here, Ultramax, and again, they're decent. I haven't taken a lot of Supreme, you know, uh, test images with it, but this is more of a demonstration purposes for the people that may be interested in this. These I think are 30 bucks, 29 bucks, and you get four of them and um, a pouch, which is what I'm using over here. And I'm going to show you why this might be advantageous. One of the filters you get is a classic UV. And so all you would do is screw this in the front and all of a sudden you've got yourself a protected front element. Um, you do want to, again, push this back, make sure that it's out of the field of view for the wider angles, but it will give you the ability to have some sort of protection if that is something that you're looking for. I This is a bonus. I just did this as a demonstration for someone who may want to do this. The main reason I would see why someone would want to use this particular setup is for a circular polarizing filter. And if you know what those are, uh, basically, as you rotate the glass, it changes the, um, the how the light waves hit the front element and allows you to reduce glare or remove glare off of metallic objects and water surfaces so you get a better reflection. It'll also darken blue skies. Now, you have to be careful um, with this. Obviously, you can look it up in line, but these work better relative to the angle of the sun. But on ultra-wide lenses, these have a tendency to get a little bit blotchy. So for water surfaces and stuff, it's not quite as bad. But for blue skies, you can get something that's light on one side, you know, kind of fading into a darker section of the sky and then lighter on the other side. So use that at your own discretion. Again, I actually bought this out of curiosity to see if it would work and bought the filters just to share them with you guys if this is something you're interested in. This is not something I actually use. So you can call it wasted money, but again, I wanted to share that with you guys um, just in case this would be something you're interested in. Trying circular polarizers, maybe with the the uh, the more zoomed in end of your ultra wide angle lens range, 
or if you want to just get creative with it or if you're really looking for some protection and you want to have a flat um, protective filter on the front. Again, I've done a little bit of basic testing, nothing extensive. My personal thoughts are circular polarizers don't work best with ultra wide lenses, but far be it for me to tell anybody else how they should take their photographs. And that'll do it guys. Again, two kind of modifications that'll help um, basically any type of photographer. If you want to get protective front elements, you want to try circular polarizers, or if you just want to get um, ND filters that aren't graduated and you're not really worried about moving them up and down and you want something really simplistic, you're talking $10 for this modification and $10 for this front element and then whatever filter set that you happen to get and you're good to go. If you use the foam and the tape, that may be all you need. If you want to go to securing these, and a pack of screws is like a little over a dollar. You'll need two of them because there's only two per pack. And then the bag of, of compatible nuts is like less than a dollar. So you're looking at four bucks here, glue or epoxy to hold the screws in place. And then um, the foam, again, you got 20 feet for like three or four bucks. So depending on what version of the build you want, you're looking at between $20, $25 for the holder component. And then the version which I use and that I recommend here is going to run you about $50 for the major components. Again, 10 and 40 for this filter holder. And then you're looking at five or 10 bucks for the screws and things like that. It still is way more secure and it beats paying 150 plus any day of the week. And if you like working with your hands, well, it gives you a project to work on. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I hope if nothing else, it was a cure for some boredom. Um, and I hope that if you have a different type of lens or any other type of need that this has um, kind of spurred some ideas of your own and that you can get to building ad adapters for a lot less uh, expense than buying them uh, retail and that you'll get a lot of joy out of the project and the photographers that the end result allows you to make. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. Until next time, be safe and God bless.